Trevor Lawrence talking a lot about his future. And one of the things he seemed to suggest is that staying in school another year is a possibility. 45 seconds for your thoughts, Mr. Riddick, go. Yeah, I think that is a real possibility because, look, I, I remember having these conversations with Steve Young as to what really determines the success or failure at a high level for quarterbacks. And Steve Young used to tell me all the time, until he got to San Francisco, he didn't really know how his career was going to go early on until he got around that kind of program to where it is geared towards the development and nurturing and the sustaining of a quarterback play at a very, very high level. And he knew that San Francisco would provide that given their history and what they had done and how they were on the cutting edge. When you're talking about Trevor Lawrence and he's looking at the prospects of potentially being drafted by the New York Jets, what do they have to offer him to, secure, to in order for, to really assure him that that is what he will get going forward? So if you're sitting here and you're Trevor Lawrence, you're absolutely having that tough conversation going, do I really want to come out and subject myself to that? It's a really interesting uh, conversation that we're hearing a lot of different places. Shefty, what are you hearing? I know that um, that this is something that is just starting to pick up some steam, but you know what I'm talking about, the, the possibilities yeah. looking ahead to that. What kinds of things are you hearing? Well, my own sense is that it's just Trevor Lawrence making a comment that he doesn't recognize will have the ramifications it does <laughs> in the markets all across the U.S. that are <laughs> buying for his services. It's a college kid saying, well, we'll see what happens, basically, and everyone running with that. Now, if you look at it from a practical standpoint, every year he stays in school, Technically, could cost him 25, 30, 35, 40 million dollars. And from a business standpoint, it makes sense to come out and start the clock, to get the clock rolling towards his second NFL contract, which could pay him who knows how much money if he's the type of quarterback that everybody thinks he is, which is the best quarterback prospect to come out since Andrew Luck. So it makes no sense financially to stay in school as much as he wants to be there, particularly when he's engaged already, he's got his fiance to move forward, begin to plan their future. And I just think it's a college kid making a comment that everybody takes and runs with. That's fair enough. But, D. Wood, you and I both know why some of this conversation is taking place. What are your thoughts as you consider the... Uh-oh. You know, he can't even stand to talk about it. The notion <laughs> that the New York Jets <laughs> might come up in here. I think D. Wood did that on purpose. D. Wood looks My good theory like that. He looks good. Is it, it, my theory is that D-Wood did that on purpose. Well, that gives me the opportunity then to ask Lewis this question. Now, if you're running a franchise <laughs> and you get some sort of word, because the other opportunity, it doesn't have to be going back to college. It, it can be doing what John Elway did a generation ago. It can be doing what Eli Manning did 20 years ago and just sort of making it clear. There's some places I don't want to go. How does that work if you're running a front office and you have the first pick in the draft? Yeah, that, it's well, I'll tell you how it works. It really is. It's a punch in the gut, and it's kind of a slap in the face, and it really it's a reality check for you for people to, to even be having these kind of conversations and having these kind of thoughts because what it is, it, it's, it's a referendum on where you are at as far as your own program build and how people really judge your level of competency to help a young man like, like this out in terms of realizing his full potential. And I think what it would make me do – it would make me start looking inward and going, okay, how have we got here? Why, why are we having, why are people talking about us like, hey, I don't want to go there. That place is radioactive. That place is going to be, you know, an absolute death knell for my, for my, uh, for my career. Well, I don't want players thinking about my organization like that. But see, unfortunately, because of the turnover, because of the lack of competency that has been shown there, they've earned the reputation. So I think, you know, you can't be mad at it. You just have to kind of look internally and go, look, how do we make it attractive for a guy like this to want to come to a place like ours because he believes that we're going to take care of him and we're going to give him every chance to succeed? And see, that's where I think the conversation with Joe Burrow last year as far as Cincinnati was concerned, I think that's why it died down very quickly. Because Zach Taylor, for all intents and purposes, has a very good reputation in the NFL. It's just not the same for your team, Greeny, right now, unfortunately. That's correct. And very conveniently, Damian Woody got his signal back right as I have to go to a break. But we will continue <laughs> this conversation as we go. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.